That's a good point. I mean, you have right now, you have Elon Musk with SpaceX yeah. trying to get uh, basically colonization onto Mars and much more. You also have, uh, what is it actually? Um, uh, Stephen Hawking is working with uh, a Russian billionaire, I believe, actually, yeah. <laughs> and is trying to uh, figure out a new way of launching people into space using, I believe, solar energy. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's also a, a new way of um, they're, they're looking into basically using solar propulsion. So, um, and I I don't know if they're specifically doing that, but there has been a lot of talk about you know basically using the sun to help um, send off the the ships. The problem, of course, then being what happens you know when you're far away where that may not work anymore, or how do you slow down that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's very interesting, this whole solar propulsion, because at that point, you don't need to bring your fuel with you. you yes. Know? You can just sort of hop at a gas station <laughs> <laughs> and, and do it. Um, and they're also looking at this kind of propulsion uh, to create the energy, to create the fuel to actually uh, push the spaceship, as it were, um, forward, to propel it forward. Um, and it doesn't really take up a lot of room, like all the, you know, all the little like the solar, uh, like the foils and everything like that, but it's a little, it's a little bit more technical than than I, than I can really speak competently about. But it is, it is pretty interesting because, right, that's one of the one of the things about space travel is, you know, it's sort of like going on a really long car trip, road trip, right? Like, mm -hmm. what do you put in your car? If your car is kind of tiny, then you know you can't really store a lot of things. And what happens if you run out of fuel? You know, never mind snacks and and TV shows to watch, but. Uh, it's, it's 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 interesting for sure and that's and that's kind of also um you know it brings some interesting thoughts into my head at least for you know the the space laws right like what's the legal system look like in space um because i would think you know in an enclosed space where you have limited resources mm -hmm. you know and then so that that in of itself is already an issue like here you know if people break into your house and steal your shit eh, you can go to target buy more shit uh, if you, you know, like your, your resources on planet earth as, as endangered as they may be, <laughs> I feel like they have, you know, we have the ability to not die, right? At least we have air, um, like the expanse, which is this amazing set of books written by James S.A. Corey. Look it up. It's amazing. It's also um, a TV show too. Yes. They also did that. Uh, you know, they talk about a lot about people who live in the belt and the asteroid belt. And they call them belters. And, you know, for them, air and water is is gold. It means everything. It's life, right? If you don't have that, you, you're dead. So that to them is very important. And, you know, the, the wealthy people are the people on planet Earth, right? Because they've got all that. Everyone's pretty much on basic income, which is also an awesome topic to talk about. <laughs> but, um, you know, everyone's on basic income so that at least, you know, they have the bare necessities to live, but they also have water and air. Mm. And it was just interesting to kind of read about that because we it's something we don't really think about, right? Like we we just kind of take that for granted. But can you imagine living in, in a place where you have to figure out how you're going to get your air, the water is rationed, what if the, you know, the air scrubbers go kaput? It's amazing to, to kind of think about that. So to me, I feel like that's, you know, resources are a big thing that I think the legal system probably would need to look at, right? Because you're not only looking at currency and using some of those resources as currency, but also, um, you know, what happens when you when you don't have them, right? How do you regulate who gets it first? Or yeah, it's fascinating. <laughs> well, and you're talking about resources, and you know, the thing that comes to mind too is especially when it comes to like a monetary unit whether it's a, a dollar or a dinar or anything else, you know, it's based off of, at least the US dollar is supposed to be based off of gold, which I feel like has yeah. pretty much transitioned over to petrol, right? To the to the oil the dollar, oil. if you will. The oil dollar. The yes. oil dollar, that's, that's really <laughs> what it's slimy, becoming now. So that's very <laughs> fitting, actually. So, you know, my question is then is, does that carry over? Do you think they will create uh, you know, a new kind of financial system where, you know, now resources like that would be more of a financial 
source, you know, like, okay, I have more power, so therefore I have more water, I have more air, I have maybe better options for food, because that will all impact law, right? And become a part of law of who gets what, when, why, and where. Yeah, that's a good point. And I can't say that I know enough about history to, to speak competently on currency in the past, right? But bef right before, before gold, like what was it, right? And so I think exactly once we move into the space era you know what what will be our currency will it be water and air the way that it is in the expanse you know would it, will it be something else will it be some sort of digital currency like bitcoin mm. um you know what uh I mean, if you look at star trek i don't even know what their currency is it seems like they just have stuff all the time and nobody gets paid or nobody has to exchange anything for anything like i'm not, i'm actually not sure how, how that how that all works um but yeah it's, it's interesting because you know right now to property is something you know like the physical is very it's ever present in our life right you can buy real estate and that's tangible goods and um you know you can buy items and that's assets um, but we are entering an era even now, and we have been for a while, um, like with credit cards, right? That's digital money in some sense, right? Putting all your money in a bank, you're doing bank transactions that are, you know, like I can send you money right now, right from my phone, boom, you got it right on your phone, mm -hmm. on the phone, right? And then that somehow you can go to an ATM and, and like 3D print the money, basically, <laughs> You know, so that's we're already kind of dealing in digital assets, right? But we still have the physical. Which yeah, and what does that represent? And I and actually, Lunar brings up a good point too uh, when he mentions which soon will be cobalt. So again, going from Ooh. cobalt, oil, petrol. I mean, again, so everyone's trying to find what actually what tangible item represents or is being represented by our monetary units. And, you know, we also can look at, though, you mentioned digital, well, Bitcoin. Bitcoin's been booming and people have been making a ton of money thanks to mining Bitcoin, which, again, I'm not sure on the process of mining. I don't quite understand it, um, but I do know <laughs> that if you've stuck it out for a long time now, you have a lot of money coming your way. And it's like, OK, well, what does that Bitcoin represent? Well, it's kind of funny because it's like, well, the Bitcoin represents money let's say like the us dollar for example or canadian dollar or what have you but then what does that represent and so it's this chain basically that's being created and so then okay well if we get out to space do we still keep the digital which then represents the dollar or whatever rupee whatever and then does that represent air food you know it it's it's so interesting to think about that as we start going more into digital and we start losing what the representation of things are. Right. And I guess somebody could be manufacturing water instead of meth in their in their <laughs> basement in their space basement at that point, just putting it together like H two O, what's up? Because that'll be the thing. <laughs> They're bootlegging water. Yeah. You know things are getting bad when people are bootlegging water. Vodka, tequila, no water. Yeah, that that is that is so cool. So resources, I think for sure, the legal system will have to do. Then you've got your financial uh, mm -hmm. considerations. You know what would even be currency, um, and if that is something physical, something tangible, you know how do you how do you regulate that, or what is that? Just how is that going to work? Those are those are interesting things to, to to think about for sure. And I think, you know, again because I think like physical space. <laughs> will be at a premium, right? Because it it right now, you could, in theory, you know, if you can't afford a house or you can't afford, you know, a physical space, don't have a car, you know, those things, you could, in theory, go somewhere where it's completely unpopulated. You can fashion yourself a bow and arrow, hunt your food, grow your crops, and live off the land, right? Like, you could. And people do, right? I mean, there's TV shows about this. <laughs> Um, if it's on TV, it must be true. It's real. <laughs> but in space, right? Like, you can't create your own spacesuit or manufacture your own water or your air, right? Like, even and even if you can, right? Let's say you're a person who knows how to do that or you have some of the resources to do that, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, but then you need a ship or you need some sort of a, a bubble of some sort to live in, right? 
in and in a way to process, to create food how, where do you get food right you can't can't eat the void so you know it brings up that whole it, to me um you know i think communities are going to have to be the way that we live even more so than today with their own laws and systems like you mentioned with like the expanse where okay let's say we have colonization or colonies excuse me we have colonies we have colonization on mars we have colonies on mars and then we have let's say on another planet or on a ship so people are living on a ship rather than an actual planet those are going to have to be or the rules will have to be dictated then by that village by that community by that colony rather than some kind of overarching system because they vary so vastly exactly so i think we'll i think there'll be more in a way tribal communities right like mm. you said where they're sort of self-contained a little bit self-encapsulated but because you need an even bigger you need a bigger tribe to even get up in space in some sense um you're still gonna have to be part of this much larger community where you are connected in some ways digitally and i mean there's no wi-fi up in space as far as i know but wi-fi is everywhere it's what i keep hearing <laughs> google will find a way i know it. <laughs> yeah google and amazon probably gonna and apple are probably all just they're just gonna have their own ships wasn't Google you Fiber? You have a plan. Like you monthly, you pay monthly rent to them to live on their ships. And if you can't pay, bye bye. Um. Anyways, <laughs> we love those companies. They're, they're great. I love them. One thing I actually that's really interesting talking about these colonies in space, though. If folks out there have not heard of uh, this project, it's there's a project out there that's called Asgardia. Hmm. It sounds like Narnia or some kind of sci-fi fantasy, but it is real, actually. There is a scientist out there who has built a community and uh, was originally looking for people to sign up to show interest in basically creating a space station independent of any nation, independent of any government body, and living out there in space on the station and having their own government and being, being considered their own nation. As part of the U, well, as part of the planet Earth, though, which is interesting, right? Um, well, I think he's what he's trying to do is, you know, obviously because we can't be in space physically right now, that we're sort of creating this digital community. And I say we because I'm part of it. Uh, that we're creating this digital community uh, in a way that is still physical, but it doesn't have um, the boundaries, right? Like that, the nations, right? So mm -hmm. anybody can join it kind of a thing, be, be a citizen, um, and then work together to get on up there, um, which is pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. It is. And <laughs> I mean, I guess I can see why you would also want to become a nation now and get accepted by the nations on earth, if you will, is the fact that you don't want nations to start fighting for you, right? And say, well, no, we're going to encompass what you're doing, your project and everything else. And now you're going to be basically like an installation of our specific nation. As soon as you earn that that independence, this the easier it will be to exist on your own without any outside influencers. So it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. I know they were trying to work on an anthem. They were trying to work on everything and, and do all this paperwork and try to go through tons and tons of, of legalities and everything else. So it'll be interesting to see what other updates come of this. And, you know, this is something that they're going to have to deal with, right? Is figuring out, well, what are the laws? What And, and I think many things do carry over, though, for what we already have. For instance, you know, don't steal, don't murder. Don't be a dick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't be a jerk, you know, things like that. And and I I do really feel that many of these laws will still stem back to Hammurabi's laws, which, you know, that was eye for an eye. So let's say, for, for instance, someone stole something, they would actually cut off your hand. Now, at least many of the laws in other nations have kind of been influenced by that. It's for some, it's still that way. I will say that, you know, if if you get caught doing something, you could be hung, you could be shot, many other things. And in other countries, though, it's more so incarceration. And that's really where, you know, maybe if you're lucky, you're in a in a country where they they also try to reform you, too. 
and try to put you back into society as a as a better member of that society. But a lot of it still stems from Hammurabi's laws of if you do something, you will get a severe consequence equal to that of what you've done. And that's, in a way. And that's interesting, you know, in terms of like you were just mentioning incarceration, right? How again, on planet Earth, I mean, you can make a bunch of prisons, I guess, right? Cuz you got the space, right? You build up on top of each other. You, you're good there. As long as you've got the resources to do it. But in space, right? Like now you've got to set aside a portion of your bubble, portion of your spaceship, portion of your space station, right? To, to incarceration and everything. And um, there's another show that I watch, The 100. And they're, the way that they deal with criminals, um, and then they do have a slightly different circumstances, and I will give them that. But... Um, the way that they deal with criminals over the age of 18 is if they do, you know, if they commit an offense that is really bad, mm. uh, they space them. They literally kick them out into space and they're dead. So they, I mean, it's basically, um, the, it's the death penalty, right? It's a little harsh, right? I mean, <laughs> here it's like, you know, even if you do something that's mostly bad unless you know i guess maybe it is murder i'm actually not sure what the death penalty they reserve that for but i'm assuming it's if you've killed another person right usually and that's also depending on at least within the u.s what state you're in some states don't do the death penalty some do right so like even for that you know it's it, you still have appeals you can get life in prison that kind of thing um depending on, on your crime but you know in this show because they had limited space they had limited resources and they couldn't waste the air, you know, like as we were talking before, air, you know, being something that's very um, precious, they were like, no, like we don't, we can't waste it on this person who's never going to be a part of our society again. So that's, that's also interesting because, you know, incarceration, like what, what is that going to look like? Because I feel like at least, at least in America, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of prison stuff happening. Um, but how do you translate that into space? You know, like, is it better to try to rehab people who do something bad? Mm. Or do you just say, F it, bye, here's the here's the airlock door? Well, and what's interesting, too, is that many jails or prisons right now are already seeing their maximum number of, of occupancies, or what I want to say, like, their occupation is at their maximum already. You basically have people on top of people in many of these prisons without any sense of expansion in the future or anything like that. I mean, there's a ton of overcrowding. So, you know, if we're already seeing that now and we have land to build prisons, let's say, or even to excuse those who have done minor offenses who probably shouldn't be in the prison system for as long as they have been now, which is a whole other different topic that I'd love to touch on soon here. Um, but then yeah, what do we do with that when we're in space, let's say? Yeah, do we just space them and say, well, we have limited resources, so uh, peace out, have fun. And do we say, well, because they're in space, that's okay. You know, where's our moral compass and how does that shift? Because that's gonna be very interesting. Because how we look at it is, depending on your moral compass, you could say, well, if someone killed someone else, then they deserve the death penalty. You could also say if someone killed someone else, you shouldn't kill them because you're doing the same thing that they just did to someone else. So, you know, the whole sense of two wrongs don't make a right. So we already have varying moral compasses as is. So, you know, how would that really shift and change once we go out into space? Right. And wasn't it, um, correct me if I'm wrong again, history is not my strongest suit point here, but um, Britain sent some of their criminals to Australia. Exactly. Right? So that was like a penal colony <laughs> when, when it first started out um, because they were like, nah, we don't want you here. We don't want you wasting our resources, but we're not going to kill you. Here, go over there. And I don't think that they were like sending them there to farm or anything, right? Like they were just like literally like, bye, sayonara. Here's a knife. Good luck. That's right. pretty is much that... as far as I what, what I understand as well, right? <laughs> because the Australian outback is very, very harsh. Oh, yeah. And so you're basically, yeah, just saying, okay, well, we don't, we're not going to kill you, but, but we're, we're not going to put you in a situation <laughs> that doesn't kill you. <laughs> Have you guys seen Survivor on TV? That's what we're going to do to you guys. 
So maybe it's like they just send people out into space to go, okay, here's a toothbrush, here's a knife, and a can of beans. Good luck. <laughs> and uh, in the chat right now, let's see, we have Lunar that said, yeah, they're reducing sentences for good conduct, but ultimately for over-occupancy. Yeah. It, it, exactly. We oversold tickets to the prison show, guys. Sorry. <laughs> And again, that whole topic itself, and I don't want to derail too much, but that is a huge topic within itself, is not even just over-occupancy or those who have done minor offenses who are in there long-term, but even the sense of, oh, what do I want to say? Like the, the prison, it's almost like slave labor, which is a topic I'd love to talk on eventually down the road here of, you know, many of these prisons are being private, are becoming private prisons being run by companies. And these people are having these prisoners do work for free. And the thing with this is, of course, you know, prisoners have to pay for everything that they get in prison. It's not just handed down. They pay for their clothes. They pay for their food. They pay for everything that comes to them. So how do they keep affording that while not getting paid anything for the work that they do? So that's an interesting concept. And it's going to be interesting because a lot of these space missions are being run by many private companies mm. so how will private companies introduce law how will they carry out in comparison to what we see already in the u.s and in many other countries where it seems that our government system you know is tilted toward supporting big businesses and sometimes it's you know it's understandable and can make sense other times though it's like well wait a minute though you're benefiting this company over the people right i mean corporate law is never it's never for the people it's for the corporations so if they're if they're financing these these trips um first of all right whose jurisdiction is in space anyways and how are they going to enforce it right i mm -hmm. mean even if uh you know elon musk's uh, little rocket makes it to mars he can do pretty much whatever the f he wants right because there's nobody oh, yeah. there to say no right um, and we have virgin as well virgin, yep richard branson, branson also trying to do a a rocket into space <laughs> we also have amazon it's interesting too because you hear a lot about spacex you hear a, a fair amount about richard branson and his uh, i can't remember what the rocket the whole space atlantic is it the Atlantic? Uh, well, Virgin Atlantic, I think, is the like the branch of Virgin that handles space stuff. I don't know. Or flight, at least. And it might also go into the space. But then, actually, Amazon's also doing their own well, rocket testing well, as well. Well, someone's got to deliver the Prime packages. That's true. When you're They're up in ours. Asgardia, <laughs> hey, I got Amazon Prime. <laughs> Two-day delivery, man. Mm. Two days. That shit's amazing. And it's terrible all at the same time because... Well, that's another topic for today, but it's it's changing our shipping expectations in a crazy way. So 3D how, printing, though, that's going to solve everything. There you go. 